is a video on doing a large sketch of our Phillips uh, plug, uh, which is at the end again of a charging cable. Um, we've done some thumbnails already. Let's have a quick look at those. So this was a previous video. Uh, we drew this one first, followed by another one. I actually went across and started doing this one third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, after all this, uh, I found that I was actually most happy with this last one. Makes it a little bit more active. It's actually not isometric in any way. There's no, there is some somewhat horizontal lines, but again, we're off in all directions. The only problem with this is that we can't draw the connection between the cable protector and the main body here. What I'm going to do instead is draw it kind of like this instead. So again, the mirror image more or less, or just kind of a rotation. So I like this angle. It's very similar to this top one that I liked first, uh, but it gives us a bit more action and we can draw it like so, so the cable's coming out the top this time instead of the bottom. I'm going to leave a space underneath here for my hand uh, when I finally photograph it. So I'm going to be looking at this, so you won't be able to see. I'll show it from time to time. Uh, and off we go. Uh, I'm actually going to start right down here. So this line and this mark, if we look at the sketch, it's about in the middle. So I'm going to begin down here and work our way out, build a box, but this is going to be our first point. So I'm on 14 by 17 paper here. Uh, I'm going to go about uh, three, three fingers up, if I have some lead, and I'm going to start about kind of in the middle of the page. So here's my start point. Sorry if you didn't see that. About three fingers up, about halfway across the page. Uh, again, quickly, just to refresh our minds, we just drew this. So I'm going to start going this way and up on this way. So, uh, just rotating around, using the side of the pad as a guide. So kind of hooking my pinky on it, I can kind of get a nice straight edge parallel to that. And also, I'm going to go up at about 30 or so, 30 degrees, somewhere in there. Nice weavy line. And then maybe up here, uh, about just under 30, maybe 15. So that's our beginning. Uh, I have measured the part with a ruler uh, and had a look at its proportions. And to me, what comes out of this is a uh, an easier, it's going to be easier for us to actually uh, use units which are, I'm just getting rid of some previous marks here. This is my first second time through this sketch, so there's some stuff left behind. Um, this is my unit ruler. Uh, each of these is about thumb width, and what I've said is each one is five millimeters. So five millimeters on the real part is one unit in the sketch. Uh, this is just to try and keep the size under control. Uh, but use up most of the paper. So, for example, if I look at this uh, part, I can see that its width is about 25 millimeters across the top by 40. So that'll give me five units by eight. Five units by eight. It is forty five deep. So that's nine units. Actually, it's closer to fifty. So we'll go back ten units. So there we go. So now, uh, moving along, we're going to be checking things out here uh, as we go along. Sorry, I'm just measuring this again off screen. So, 
So this is our angle uh, that we're interested in. I'm going to go ahead here and set up. Sorry, it's an oscillator. So um, there's various ways to do this. You can kind of draw it first. So I'll try and parallel. And I'm going to go for, again, 8. And just check that we're at 5. We're slightly off here. So just fix that up. And this one I'm going to erase because it's going to cause confusion. So I'm just erasing the incorrect line. Oh, or both of them. And then we know that at least when we get started here, we're going to be using some reasonable uh, setup from here. Uh, eight again uh, by, f or sorry, ten by five. So again, parallel, parallel, and we want to be ten by five. Oh, sorry, uh, eight by f ten. Sorry. See how close we are. Not too good. So just and usually I wouldn't bother with this, but because it's our first sketch, um, this size has a big effect on what we're doing here. We want to be as accurate as possible to begin with, uh, within reason. And then we can kind of go from there. It's all looking okay. And from here, we're actually going to be going again parallel. We know that this is a long parallel to the page, so I'm going to use the edge of the page. Be nice parallel there. This again is five. So we've got five. And we just have to. Similarly, connect these guys together. Oh, trying to do that. So there we go. We've got good length, good size. Uh, everything looks fine. We're going to be interested in the middle of this. So I'm just going to put two and a half on there because the prongs stick out of this side. And if you want halfway up, going on here sorry halfway up just to give us a little help for that line because it is quite long and then half of eight of course is four that gives us the center of that face uh, previously we have uh, measured this uh, I well, at least I did I found out that the fillets are radius one unit five millimeters in the real part so just transferring that around. And that gives us a chance to draw in the arcs. Again, we're you know we're not getting the perfect shape here in CAD land. We might be worried if this was G2 or G3, or even just G1. But for us, we tend as we sketch manually, we tend to get essentially G2, which is a uh, constant uh, curvature uh, shift. So the acceleration is the same. So we, because of the way our limbs are put together, we tend to not be so bad at this stuff. Uh, CAD is the time to define that for, to be exact. Just transferring this unit length again. Sorry, can't see that. So moving, doing the fillets again one unit radius. Again, now what I'm doing here is I'm going to transfer my silhouette edge first. So parallel, parallel where it touches. Try and keep it as straight as we can. And then we come down and join that. It's quite rough to fix out a paper. Spinning around. Again, parallel, parallel. And a real rack of a line. Yep, 
and repeating this shape here. We've got a silhouette. Uh, the part is split at the back. It is one unit in, so that makes our life easy. Uh, so what I'd like to do is begin with a guide. So I'm adding a unit, and I'll add another one just to give myself a bit of a helping hand here, and then just connect these guys together. And this is our cap. So in the in the real part, uh, there's a two-part arrangement. If you look at the photos I've put up on D2L, you'll be able to see that. So the idea here is that we draw quite clearly this arrangement. Now we can just kind of guess this in. There's no need to get carried away. I would like to finish in the right spot though. That looks good. And then the same underneath. Oh, wrong one. So we have, again, that. While we're at it, at this big size, we can put our groove in. So there is a gap in the, in the, between the two parts. And we can easily just put that in. And do both sides. This will give us a little dent in the silhouette, which will emphasize that there is, in fact, a kind of a groove here. Okay, so everything's looking good. Uh, we're going to draw the uh, cable sticking out. It's going to be in the middle of that surface at the top. I'm just going to put that down a couple times so I can myself a target and it is actually a unit and a half in not on the line or on the on the separation but just slightly inboard so that's our center parallel and then parallel again so parallel parallel I'm gonna be a bit close up here it is I believe it's let me just check here. It's two units tall. We're close. So that's going to be our part here. And then above that, uh, the cable will protrude. I know from pre measuring this, the cable is half a unit in diameter. So just to remind myself what's going on here, I'm going to get that guy going off the side of the page there. It's a bit tight, but not, no, not too bad. Could have done with moving the whole thing slightly downward, but yeah, we do what we do. Um, up here, I'm going to leave the prongs uh, for a little while, so con concentrating up here. The diameter of the base of this thing, uh, centered here, is actually two units. So I can just measure that across. Nice. And then again. Parallel, parallel, parallel. Get my ellipse set up. Parallel, parallel, parallel. Give me a chance to do the easy parts of the ellipse. And this is because of the exact angles I've picked. We're not going to end up with a, the usual sort of two to one isometric, but we're going to do not too bad. Above up here, we have the full diameter of the, the cable, where the cable grip is, is just under a unit. I'm actually going to take a shortcut here and just kind of sketch in where that kind of goes around the cable. Nice. Now, if we try and find the contour lines here through the middle of this guy, so again, parallel, parallel. We could just kind of connect these two together. However, if we look closely at the thing, and if you look at the photo, you'll notice here it kind of starts off flat, curves up nicely, and then goes more or less straight right up to there. And that's going to be on both ends. Again, very Mech 200 style thing going on here. 
my cable is strangely off kilter. There we go. So this thing here, the silhouette, has to match as well. So, you know, we could spend some time here. Uh, one way is to just put a nice little edge, a little contour in here, which matches the ellipse underneath. And then just map in a nice silhouette that kind of comes in and heads up to the side. Now I want this to be as symmetrical as possible. If I go up and find that the ellipse I drew first isn't very good, just work it through. If it starts to become messy, just get rid of excess word, excess lead here. Straighten some stuff up. That's not bad. Uh, there's a basically a clear spot across. And then we've got four dents in this. So I'm going to put first about halfway along here, starting here, some arcs. I'm going to define where my dents start. And then within the dents, or sorry, within the uh, construction, I just am going to add sort of the beginnings of my holes. Try and keep it even. They get bigger as they go down. Again, have a look at the photo. Second one. No, sorry, third one. And the third, uh, fourth. Okay, here we go. Try and keep them the same size-ish. Again, it, it's a, it, we're trying for accuracy, but not getting crazy. These are, they kind of go in and get smaller, so we can you know, for example, the corners are going to be like this. So we can add kind of the inside edge of these holes, dents. The other thing is we'll be able to see the a kind of very sort of the beginnings of it as it goes around the other side of the part. So I'm going to extend these curves, and I'm not doing a great job here, but reasonable, just to catch where this might show up properly. So, rub it in, get each of those. And then when we do our final uh, sort of edges, we'll emphasize this some more. Same on the other side. Sorry, my head might be getting in the way there. Again, not ultra precise, but reasonable. Uh, like we want to be quite good here and show that it's a corrugated surface. This is a separate part from the housing, so I'm not that worried about putting a darker edge in here just to emphasize the division between parts. Again, while I'm in here, I'm gonna make a big deal about this groove. Not bad. Then we can kind of start to lay in some surfaces here, or edges, just to kind of keep things under control as we go along. Not bad. So there's our, uh, what would you say, cable protector. Down at the other end of the part, we've got the prongs, or the electrical contacts. Uh, measuring this, uh, I'm not going to show you what I'm doing, oh, sorry. What I'm doing here, it's about three units apart, and each one is one unit thick by three units long. So, oh, what did I say there? Three units. So there we go. Three units halfway between. We can just use this one we already have. So a half and one, half and one. Uh, parallel, 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 parallel. We have this angle here we're going to use. Parallel, parallel, hopefully it's three units. And we'll just put a mark out here while we're at it. And parallel and Parallel. Oh, parallel. 
they're one unit across. I'm just using what's uh, not a nice halfway mark here. So again, parallel. You can see that's not quite right. Here's my mark. Parallel and parallel. Mark it onto that. And the same at the top. This gives me a good chance to get the top surfaces good. So just connect those guys together. And we're doing okay. Ooh, no, we're not. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go inboard at each step. So we want to go again parallel, parallel. It's a quarter unit thick, this these uh, contacts. So again, just use my little handy paper ad hoc ruler to get this sorted out. There's some changing we're there's some changing we're gonna have to do uh, at the end of the prongs here, but for now it's fine. Then we're moving inwards because right, the overall length is three units, so we're thickening towards the inside of the part. Uh, the, each of these contacts has a hole in it. Uh, so we're gonna draw those. They are half a unit, I think. Yep. So, and they're about three quarters of a unit in. So this is kind of the middle of the our surface. We luckily have another line here we can use. So I'm gonna go in half a unit. and make the diameter half a unit. Setting up for an ellipse again. I've got quarters here, perfect. Now for the purists amongst us, uh, what I'm doing right now is not completely kosher with uh, power lines. Uh, I am cheating here slightly, but this does make our life easier, so we're gonna Stick with it. So again, go on around and make it our lips as best we can. Uh, will we be able to see the inside of the hole? Yes. So I'm just going to kind of finish this guy up here a little bit. It's going to be kind of quasi final lines. So we can see through that. Uh, at each end actually is a chamfer. Uh, it's not a sharp end, but a, there is a, a sort of a, uh, to make the plug uh, easier to get in to the wall socket, uh, there is a sort of a chamfer at the ends of this thing. It's also not straight. It bulges and comes back. So I'm just gonna try and Make a small attempt at showing this. Uh, again, CAD is really good at this sort of thing, so we're not going to get too worried with this. But I am just trying to show that there is a, a modified shape at the end of this uh, to get it, uh, to make it easier to uh, insert the plug into the wall socket. Uh, not something you want to make hard uh, for someone like this where something might have just woken up, maybe doesn't have specs on is trying to charge their, in this case, a uh, shaver is what it's for. So just kind of generic, how do you make it easy for people to uh, assemble things, usually in the dark without really seeing things, uh, with, a, with a good feedback click uh, or feeling that it's actually mounting correctly. There's our prongs. Uh, within the prongs, in this middle part here is a small uh, injection port. Uh, it's about half a unit as well. And it's a circle with a small sort of depression inside of it. 
So we can add this. Because of this projection angle, it's quite uh, roundish. Doing a bad job here. And we can use contour lines to show the shape of it. If we want, uh, we can use contours to show that that continues over, but I tend to just let them taper out a bit here. We have some contour here. Just to make it clearly a small depression in there. We're doing okay. Um, the only other thing is a side panel. We're drawing it this way. So we like to draw this panel just as a very shallow hole. It's actually a unit up uh, inboard from each end and an up from the beginning of the um, fillet on this side here. So again, I'm just going to continue down here. This is two units in. Because of the end of part. So just put that up. Again, connect those two, oh, those two lines. Now the radius of the fillet is one, so again we need two. I'm gonna use a different thing here, two so to go down the radius of the fillet and then another edge. Same on the bottom. If we, get, if we want a helping hand here, we can also give ourselves that. So an extra mark just in the middle, just to help our line to be more kosher. Uh, there is a very slight fillet on the end of these, so I'll just mark that in. And sketch across with a sort of in between -y, uh hardness or uh, darkness line. Uh, I want to make this very slightly uh, inside, inset, or depre uh, not depressed, but kind of like a small flat hole. And just following around that edge. And right now it doesn't really matter uh, where it is until you get to the end. And then you have to say, well, it's going underneath and getting hidden. So there we go. And that's more or less it uh, for here. It's now just final ends. Uh, luckily, mm, very close. You can kind of see the edge in there through the little hole in the prong. We miss, oh, we miss it here. And then just fix that later. Trying to uh, do this all in one go. Well, because I've already drawn a line, it's often easier uh, because there is a kind of small micro groove in the paper. Uh, so you find yourself easy, or at least easier, to follow a line that's already there. Except right there. Good lord, that's horrible. So, going around that curve better. There we go. Do it again, but better. Uh, drawn from upside upside down here, sorry. And getting those edges sorted. And around to the back. Not bad. Now my habit is to put a heavier line around the outside of this guy, around the whole silhouette. Uh, it can be quite tedious. Uh, if I had a, I have a lead holder which has been posted up to detail by now. Um, if I had lead in it, I would use that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have it here with lead in it. Uh, it's got a colored lead right now. 
And all I do is go around and try and show that this is all one. Oh, sorry, crashed into the camera there. Uh, all one assembly. So this is a this was a bad line earlier, but then we can just kind of hide it uh, inside of that heavier uh, line that we're using to show the assembly. Let me flip back here. And up here we've got, uh, it's a bit tight. Uh, if I'd been luckier, I would have moved this down a little tiny bit if I could see the future. So I had more space for the cable, but uh, it's not too bad. Again, nice. So. One of the problems that you're going to be set is to put data overlays on these things. For now, let's just go with uh, material and maybe parts list, kind of, like a little start of BIM uh, style thinking. Uh, BIM is building in information management, it's starting to creep into engineering as well, um, or into mechanical. We'll contour line here just to uh, make it clear what's going on there. Okay, so that's not bad. Uh, I want to keep this area for my hand. Uh, so what I'm, I'm gonna do here is start with, um, you know, a list of materials by pointing out the part. I'm gonna start with this main piece here. I'm gonna follow this direction. So I kind of pulled back from the center of the top and then pull out of projection by giving me a straight line. Same up here. I'm really tight up here. So this cable, so I'm actually going to follow this line and then pull it down so I can label it happily down here. If I'm on, it's not great here, uh, but I could put it quite close. Follow the same, oh, follow the same argument. It labels the cover. Gonna keep this end for my uh, this end for my hand. So again, just sticking to projection, and then coming out of projection with a horizontal line. At this end, I think it makes sense to let's see here. Stay in. This one's a little harder. I think I'm gonna have to go out of projection here slightly. So I'll just, I'll go out and, and if I'm uh, organized, I can also point to two things. So I'm gonna label that maybe as contacts. And if you get in the way, people will be able to figure out what's going on a little bit if you just erase a bit of the line. I'm just going to cover it up. I'm going to tidy that up a bit. And then down in here, I'll just call it, uh, I think it's a zinc copper alloy. I'll just call it. Uh, and it's chromed. Nice. Uh, I'm going to call this, I'm going to write this quite big here. Uh, main. Whatever it's called, it Phillips, I don't know. And down, um, tidy it up. And we'll call it. Uh, ABS plus, uh, what should we say, just maybe other, 
there's going to be some stuff in there that we don't know about. A lot of electronics all around. Uh, at the other end, we might have the end cap. Wow, nice seat. And the same for that. ABS and other. At the top here, we've got the power cable. So we'll just uh, go to the other style power cable. That might be uh, material wise, maybe what would it be? I don't know, we'll call it PTFE or something. Plus copper alloy. And then we've got the uh, cable uh, let's call it a guard which will be PTFE and there we go we now have a uh, reasonable sketch, I hope, uh, of our part. I'm going to try and zoom out here. Uh, all in one go. I need my name, I suppose. Ugly, but workable. And then when I get the photo, I'll try and get my hand in there. Well, I just put my hand in there, and uh, that's what I'll post as my uh, to my PDF. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, that was quite long. Hopefully, uh, you're well enough informed of uh, YouTube. You could fast forward, but uh, there's how, if I was you, we could sketch uh, a charging block or plug-in cable block for a Philips uh, Razor uh, charger. Thanks for watching, uh, over to you.